So the big question that I want to ask right now is, do you think your personal information is safe? Fuck no. Yeah, I don't think so either. And I think a lot of people would be surprised at how unprotected their personal information is. Let's talk about that and other things related to that uh, on today's podcast. The first episode of Season 2 of C. Roller and Willie. I'm C. Roller. And I'm Willie. So I know you take your security, your personal information, your per- personal security pretty high. But I think even you don't realize how much information you're giving out on a daily basis. No. Because I know you don't trust like apps like TikTok. And why is that? Well, I don't like TikTok because it's not an American company it's actually based in china and i feel like they use that to spy on you know everyday you know people i mean i think that's a lot of information for for them to go through to spy on people but i definitely think it could be used for that i think a lot more of the information is probably would probably be coming from what what they i doubt they they would i doubt they would spy on like regular people regular people like us but like let's say someone like a politician oh yeah and they have tiktok they would be like one of the people that i i would be spying on if i you know was spying on someone you know like high like election people yeah i mean that that is a good point i think there are a lot of other companies that are like stealing more information than tiktok well yeah you got you got google which you know most people have a google email face facebook is a big one yeah facebook is a big one i mean i think we'll discuss this later in the in the episode because this ties into something else I want to talk about, but there's a lot of information people put on Facebook that you'd be surprised at how easy it is to find what they put out there, you know? Right. Like, for example, like, I want to say something about the whole TikTok thing. But with another thing with TikTok, I feel like people, like, uh, like companies, you know, it's, this is a TikTok company, and, and they literally watch and see who has, you know, is making, like, really high view videos and they just watch them but if it's someone that only has like 10 views on the video they're just like huh my thing is maybe i I do think that there are technologies out there that can actually and this is the scary part there are technologies out there that can take a video and determine where you're at based on the video however i don't think any government is going to be using that to spy on random u.s citizens no like you said, if it's somebody of importance, they probably would. Well, yeah. Or they think you're a threat. But for, a threat. But for will. you and me and probably anybody watching this or listening to it, I don't think I don't think that's gonna be the issue. I think the issue is what you put out there yourself voluntarily. Right. The things you say and do and put into the websites that you do. Basically your videos is kinda of like how like an email is. Like it can either be flagged or not be flagged. Well, I think TikTok, I don't know I don't know if TikTok has this. It probably does, but I know Instagram does. There's geolocations on pictures and videos. So if you take a picture if you take a picture of like the local McDonald's, mm-hmm. somebody could look at that picture, right? Look up the look up the metadata of that picture and be like, Oh, you were at McDonald's. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, like, I get what you're saying, that, like, people could be using TikTok for that. But I think, I think in general, though, TikTok is probably one of the, it's one of the less ones, just because there are so many people using it that. They're not, they can't keep track of, like. You can't keep track of every single person. Right. That's why, that's why I was saying that they only go for the important people. What I'm saying is, like, things like Facebook and Google are doing it already for every individual for profit because if you've ever seen an ad on on like facebook or an ad on like youtube or on a website that's provided by like google adsense or whatever those ads are targeted directly to you based on your browsing history based on your likes on uh likes on facebook or based on the the places you've been the things you've done it's weird it is honestly weird. How many people you know that don't have a Facebook account? Even like I'm not don't count, this, don't don't count people that don't use their Facebook account, even though they might. No, have I one, mean, but. there are millions of people, just millions of them. But I think the younger generation is starting to go away from Facebook. But all of us, all of us millennials, and I think some of the Gen Z, but like 
even my parents use it. Like it's just I've like multiple generations of people use Facebook. So the people that are turning away from Facebook, what are they using? They're hopping. I think they're hopping between like TikTok, Instagram. So uh, basically, they're YouTube. just using their TikTok as their new you know profile for. A lot of people are taking their social media to other places, and I don't know all of them. Uh, also, like Snapchat. Snapchat's big. I mean, oh yeah, Snapchat's big. But I don't personally use it just because I. I mean, but you have an account with Snapchat. Everyone has an account with Snapchat. It just I most some it. of them don't use it. I I don't use it, I, but I have an account. I haven't used mine in years. But my my point here is is that they're they're, they're taking your information. And more than you think, because yes, I, I said that they, they follow the things you like on Facebook. They follow the websites you've been, the places you've shopped, the place Google has things like if anybody has an Android phone, they know where you've been. They actually keep track. There's an app in your phone that maps your location at all times. Yeah. You could pause that, but most people don't. Most people don't even know what's going on. Um, it's like every social media app. When you download it and you sign in, they're like, "Can this?" And I think app- I think Apple. I think Apple might because it has Google Maps in it, right? And I think that as part is part of the thing that tracks you is Google Maps. I mean, think about it. like you download a new app like Snapchat or something like that, and they'll ask you a question, like multiple questions, like, "Can this app access your camera, your location at all times?" And you can either allow it or deny it. You know. Well, yeah, why do you think they ask for your location? They want it's your location. It's that geolocation thing I was asking. They want access to your camera, too, you know, so they can... Well, most of most of them, they have purposes for each thing that they do, but those purposes may also be used against you, you know? Yeah. Like, sure, Facebook's going to ask to use your camera because you could take pictures and post them, to, uh, post them to Facebook, but they could also use that camera to figure out where the hell you're at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But my dirty, thing, that's my dirty. thing is, my thing is, is supposedly they, they they don't they don't use your microphone or camera without your permission. But let me ask you this: I got a cat off of you, right? A what? A cat? Yeah. You called her Ember. I call her September. September. I thought it was, I thought it was funny. She does look like a fall cat. But the thing is, like I had mentioned to you, I'm gonna need a litter box. Because I only have the ones for my cats. I need an extra one because, the you know, cats need their own litter boxes. Technically, you should have, like, one and a half to two per cat. Right. But I mentioned something to you about bringing a litter box or bringing a litter box. Otherwise, I'd have to go out and buy one myself. And you're like, okay, sure. The point here is, two days later, I got an ad for Litter Robot. <laughs> the... The litter box that automatically filters your cat litter. So, which app you think it was that tracked or like hacked into your mic? Well, given given that it started on Facebook, I'm gonna guess it was Facebook. <coughs> yep. Go because figure. it started on Facebook, and then I didn't see a YouTube ad for it until like a week later. So, I think Facebook was the one that uh, triggered that in my... Then they uh, probably shared it with other, you know, big companies. Oh, yeah. And they definitely share information. You don't think your information is being shared under multiple companies? Oh, it is. Just look at your fucking spam box on your email. When you... That, that That's one thing that irritates me, is they all share your email between companies. If you sign up for something, that email is getting sent to every other company, right? Yeah. I mean, all these big tech companies all work together. You know what I think is funny, though, is that people are more accepting of this. I mean, sure, there are a lot of people that are like, okay, this is th- this is concerning, this is concerning. But people were up in arms when Amazon was like, what was like, we're going to track your order. We're going to track your order so we can suggest items for you. Like, you bought, you, like, like the idea of you, you bought this CD or this book on our app. You might like this book. People are like, hell no, back in like the freaking 90s. And now people look at that and they're like, oh, cool, oh, okay, I like cool. this book. <laughs> people yes. don't realize Amazon's been storing your information since the freaking 90s. I mean, it's funny because I showed you earlier about all my, like, my hundred and what, 30 cans of Chef Bourdie. And yesterday I was looking at my Amazon orders, right? And they're like, oh, you might like SpaghettiOs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Amazon's been doing this since the 90s. They, they're the like, OGs. Oh, <laughs> but speaking of like stores like that doing that, did you know that Walmart? Walmart actually stores your information. Do you think when Here, you purchase when okay. you purchase something from Walmart and use cash, do they track that? Um, or I'm sure I'm sure they have the ability to since they have cameras at every re- uh, register. But I think it makes it easier if you use a credit card because I have a credit card linked to my to my Walmart app, right? So that I can order things online. Which I had to sign up for because to get my freaking uh, my freaking furnace has a stupid size filter that they don't stock at like Rolls or Home Depot. I found a place that sells it and it's on Walmart.com, right? So I put in my information there, right? I noticed that when I go and buy things at their store, it shows up on the app, like a detailed list of every item I purchase. Because I used my credit card at the register when I paid for it. I did notice that if I used a different credit card, that order doesn't show up. But I'm sure if they really wanted to, they could look at it and be like, okay. They could look at it and be like, okay, this person looks similar to this person. They probably ordered that order. So, okay. So you're saying like, let's say I went to Walmart and I Bought, you know, I had a bunch of shit in my cart, and I went to go pay cash, right? Is it like, if they wanted to, can they do the whole Jason Bourne thing where they get the, all the cameras focusing on one person and watch him walk through the store? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's crazy. I mean, think about it. That self-check, okay, the self-checkout, and it annoys the crap out of me, will constantly, like, I'll just scan stuff, scan it, put it in the bag, oh, scan it, watching, put it in the bag. They're watching what you're scanning, yeah, You too. scan it, put it in the bag, scan it, put it in the bag. Sometimes it says, miss scan. I'm like, no, I didn't. You can see it right there. It's scanned. And then it replays the video. So if it's replaying the video of me scanning it, do you think they couldn't do that? That's they fuck- have a video of you scanning items. It's fucking nuts. I mean, it's not. It's ridiculous. And by the way, this isn't new. Walmart's been doing this for years. There was a story back in the day of a father who found out that her that, that his daughter was pregnant because she bought a pregnancy test at Walmart. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Walmart's been doing this for years. All these big companies have been keeping track of customer data. And they tell they tell people the reason why they do it is for like shoplifters, right? Oh, that's only part of the story. I think at this point we all know they also do it. They also do it as like you are their product. Think about it for a second. Everybody knows that nothing is free, right? Right. So how are you using Facebook? How are you using Google, YouTube? TikTok, Instagram. None of those services charge you money. No. But how do how do they get So money? how are they paying for that service that, that they're providing you? That's what you I'm saying. You are the product. Yeah. They all they all work together. <laughs> your they information. All profit. They your profit information you. is what they're after. And here's the thing is people willingly put this information in. They click on what they like. They they click on what they the pages they like the the celebrities they like they they put in their high schools they put in their jobs they put in their their phone numbers their emails all that information hey if you're enjoying the podcast so far make sure you hit that like button we have plenty more coming so uh you may consider subscribing so you don't miss anything TikTok say that they don't share information with the uh, Chinese government, but the problem is the Chinese government said they any, own it. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. They own it. They have every right to it. Yeah. Unfortunately, regardless of whether you like it or not, the Chinese government could just be like, hey, information. You know what? I don't like this guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find him and I'm going to just stalk the fuck out of him. <laughs> that's basically what it is. Like, they don't like. That's why I say they go after politicians. But then a lot of politicians probably get paid by them. I don't know. I just, I know that Google and Facebook use it to make money off of you. Your information is basically just a monetary value to them. Right. Everything you put into their, into their websites or their apps. My question is, I want to ask you one question, right? You think YouTube does that? Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Do you know who owns YouTube? No, I do not. Google acquired YouTube years ago. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, which is now. Oh, that's why I get advertisements. ABC company or something like that, whatever. 
whatever their whatever their overall company is, basically the meta of Google. Right. They basically have bought out YouTube. YouTube hasn't been a hasn't been its own company in years. This is actually remind me of an episode of Futurama where like advertisements, you know, whatever you're into, the advertisement will change just for you, like on a big screen and shit, like when you walk by it. Where do you think they got the idea? Well, it's true. <laughs> they got the idea from what's actually happening. That's crazy. They, you know, they say the Simpsons predicts things. Yeah. All they're doing is taking a look at what's going on and making predictions based on ba- common common sense of what's going to happen. Like, later if on. this is going on right now, what's probably going to happen? I think the most amazing one was uh, the Trump being president. That one, because that's such an oddball one, but a lot of their predictions are things where you could look at it and be like, well, no, duh, it was bound to happen. Yeah. So. Well, I wanted to say, like, speaking about YouTube, I had, a, like, a, a like some kind of advertisement showed up, and then after that, it was like a survey. It's like, oh, how, how are advertisements doing for you? Rating it from excellent to good. And well, I, I actually just hate those because usually they ask me, of, usually they ask me, have you seen these advertisements? I'm like, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't pay attention to advertisements. I try my best to tune them out, but it, it's hard for me to tune them out because I spent a lot of time as a kid, actually, um, as a kid or young adult, maybe even in my teens, just analyzing advertisements, right, and being like, and just making fun of them. I, I think I, I really should get back into doing that. Yeah, you probably should because I um I got this uh, commercial. It was like on youtube it was like pick up your free holster today you know only pay for shipping and stuff i'm like you know what i'll look at it and i clicked on it right but the freaking thing didn't even pop up it was just a complete website with other shit that you know like kind of like trolls you into going to that website and well, i said a couple of things on facebook that were like that where they're like yeah was like advertising one product but then it takes you to a website where you buy a bunch of different products yeah and that's just one of like a million things you could buy on there yeah, basically. And, and the then worst you thing to, is, they don't even take find, you. Yeah, to try to find that item on yeah, that Yeah, the worst website. thing is, is you, they don't even take you to the product page. They take you to the home page of the website. Like, it's so freaking dumb. But I honestly, really we're, want, we're I really want that holster. Point. <laughs> the point is, is you are willingly putting your information onto places like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. If you think Snapchat's safe, it's, because it deletes your stuff. It stored every one of those things in its server somewhere. You yeah, know, so I was like, oh, someone deleted my, you know, so happened dick pic. No, they got it. <laughs> I mean, they might dump their servers every once in a while, but it's on their server once you upload it until they decide that, that your data is no longer useful to them. That might be five years, 10 years. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I, like, how often most companies try? I mean, I, I don't know either. I'm not. I don't work at those companies. Right. I'm just you would saying. Think, you would think they would trash. Them I just. I, I, what I do know is that they have a server out there somewhere that stores your thing so that somebody else can see it. Whoever you send it to, right? Yeah. That person may lo- no longer be able to see it. They probably got like a backup server. That data was out there. It didn't get deleted. Could have got shared by multiple other. You know. It could. Theoretically, you're trusting. That another company did not share your in private information or your private pictures or whatever. You're trusting in a company that is selling your information. Do you think you know how like you give like um Snapchat Snapchat or Facebook or whatever access to your camera? Do you think they can like actually use your camera and like you know what I mean? Like like a Walmart camera, I'm like, okay. They can't. They can? They can't. The they question can't. is do they? They absolutely can do they and as i pointed out they definitely use microphones bro well, yeah because they definitely yeah. facebook definitely uh listened into a conversation that didn't happen like like it wasn't like a communication through facebook i didn't type in litter boxes on the internet it was literally a conversation between you and me in your living room yeah so no. litter boxes and all of a sudden they want to you know throw that in there i stopped using google I only use it for, like, certain things, like, if I, you know, like, mapped or whatever, like, GPS and stuff like that, but I started switching to a different web browser. Oh, what's that? It's called uh, Brave. I've heard of that. I don't know much about that one, because... Well, what it is, it's 
it's not as big as Google, but they do not share your information. Like when you when you try to go, or not Google search when you try to search something on Brave, it's not going to give you like a very small limit of things like what Google does. It's going to be like more of a variety because they're not you're going by oh this person like this or this person like that you know. Well, this- Google's Google's uh, web search is based on interlinking things. Their ranking is based on the idea that if people have searched for something, right? Right. They're they're looking for a very specific thing. If multiple people are talking about it, is that put in the number one top spot, pretty much? Basically, if you're a credible source, multiple people are going to be like, "Hey, look, this person knows what they're talking about," and link to you. That's how they do their rating system. Yeah, because they go based on how many links are back to your thing. And I feel like Google, they like so, to. So when they're when they're when they're doing their search results, they show you basically a popularity search of how many people are linking back to this website. Mm-hmm. They've had to do other factors, search it, such as how many people like click to it, and and whether or not there are certain keywords and stuff like that that other places do. But their founding idea was that. If you know what you're talking about, other people will cite you as a source for information. Right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're always going to be looking for the the exact same person's opinion on something. I just don't trust a Google web browser search because I feel and like... As I, you pointed out, though, you're saying that Brave has, like, uh, doesn't store your information. I question that. I mean, sure, they might say that, but I, I don't trust it as much as you do. I mean, I'm not going to say any company or web browser can be 100%, you know, safe, but it's still better than Google. Like, I don't trust a lot of, like, Google anything. Like, I don't trust their web browser. I don't trust, like, nothing on Google. And I feel like my debit card and information is stolen or hacked into because of Google. Um, I doubt it's Google. Is Google, like, do you think most hackers, right, if they want to hack someone, do you think they would go for it? Before well, Google. Google would be a harder one just because of how big fact, it is. Yeah, and the fact that they've got teams of people on security, it's most likely going to be most likely they're going to start with a place that has a lower profile because they will have less security measures in place. Right. Which honestly, I think is why a lot of people need uh, two-factor identification on almost everything because. You want to be able to say, hey, look, somebody else is getting into this website. Was that you? You're like, no. But also, if they're trying to hack into the website, there's not much you can do about it. But having two-factor two identification stops you in particular from being that that particular in. So you're saying Google, you using Google Chrome or whatever is safe web browsers? I'm not saying it's any safer than anything else. I'm just saying you can't guarantee that Brave is safer. But Google likes to but share I am, shit. But I, but I definitely, I'll definitely agree with you that putting your bets on a company that you know is selling your information is probably not the best option, though. So if you feel safer on Brave, I'm not going to necessarily judge you for that because, like, obviously Google is selling your information. So going with a so going with a browser that isn't necessarily known for selling your information. I mean, I is st- going don't to get be, me wrong. I still use Google Chrome. I just you know I use it when I need information like now now I'll use my brave i won't go to a certain website you know what i'm saying is is sure brave may seem like a better alternative and it might be for now but you never know once they get bigger and bigger and bigger you, you never know what what's going to happen because any company could sell you out any company. yeah so i know it's like a lot of like youtubers they were saying like they would make a video they're like well if you get an email from a person, you know, identical to my name on YouTube. It's not me, you know. So I made like a bullshit, you know, thing, trying to, you know, steal money from you guys and stuff like oh, that. Emails, yeah. Your emails are ridiculous for stuff like that, and, and well, it's so still- easy to email because everyone has access to your email because you, you know you have to have an email to make a username, right? Yeah, my email is out there on the dark web. I can tell you that already. If you want to know. If you want to know if your if some of your private information, particularly your login and credential, is uh is is out there on the black web or the dark web, uh, go to a website called Have I Been Pwned, which is 
P W N E D pwned. Have I been pwned dot com and just type in your email address or your phone number and it will tell you if they found your email or your email or your phone number or your login credentials in a information database stored on a dark website somewhere. And getting on the dark web, you know, a lot of these um hackers use that, don't they? Yeah. But it makes it so much easier if your information is it's already there. there. It's already there. Yeah. So if somebody's like like say somebody does in fact hack into a website. You want to change your email pa- like your password for that website before they decide to log in and mess with your account. Yeah, they can. They can change your orders, they can do whatever the fuck they want with it. Speaking of passwords though, what do you think the top passwords are that people use? I mean, how many how many uh let letters, digits, like all together, like you know what I mean? Because well, most of them are at least what seven letters or something like that. Uh, I think I think at this point it's like eight, but eight. But well, a lot of a lot of older websites didn't have very many qualifications. I mean, even where we work at, they had a set of password up. You know, on the kiosk, right? Yeah. Back in the day. You know, the little kiosk. You're supposed to change it every like. It, no, no, this is before they did all that, but when they, you know, did all that to check your time clock and stuff like that before yeah. the, you know, chronos, my password was actually one, two, three, four, five. That is the second most common password. The most common is password. People literally just type password as a password. Password. <laughs> There's also gas, QWERTY, and then other similar things like 777, seven, 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 like yeah, yeah, Just one 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 things. zero 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 zero. I think the modern one is password one two three, or password one two three exclusive. But that that point. is genius, because not, not really because it's easily guessed. It's going to be at the top list of everything guessed. Well, if I wanted to hack you, right, and I'm trying to figure out your password, I'm going to think about everything that you like. I'll be like computers, video games. You won't get it. You know what I mean? Like, Based on that, you will not get it. My password is not a word. Oh, okay. So. And it should not be a word. It should not be a word. That is one of the biggest things I've learned is it should not be a word. Like, my password is basically, like, things that no one e- even says on a daily basis. So <laughs> I try to keep it a little bit complicated, even though it's, like, I mean, easy. The, the thing is, is that the more we try to push for secure measures on websites, the harder it is for people to get passwords that they can remember. Right. Which means that they will most likely fall back into bad password practices. Let me ask you this. The password you use, you use it on everything? Unfortunately, that is my downfall. I need to switch out my password to multiple different passwords. Like, that is something everybody should be doing, but that is something that I fail at. Yeah, because I use my password on everything just so I remember it. That is actually how a lot of people people get. get, like, like... Okay, a lot of people get the, get their basically their entire identity stolen because they're like, okay, they found out your Facebook password or your LinkedIn password or your Instagram password, whatever. But then they also find out that you have a bank, right? Yeah. You use that password for your bank. Guess what? Oh, funny All story. they have to do is figure out what your account number is funny type story in on your that password. One. So uh, my debit card got locked last Saturday because the previous, I tried to purchase some beer or whatever, and it was like debit card decline. You know, I'm like, what the fuck? So I had to call the bank up and they're like, yeah, we locked your debit card because you're trying to purchase something, your $11.41 at Wendy's in a different state. They're like, was that you? And I'm like, no. I mean, here's I'm like, keep that card locked. I had to go to the bank, get a new one. Then they put in my, uh, my other bank account that I rarely use. I mean, here's the thing. I I personally use credit cards and credit cards do the same thing, except for I'm not liable for any purchases. Whereas with debit cards, it's questionable by whatever bank you're on, whether or not you're liable for those purchases. Because once the money's withdrawn from your account, where the hell is it? Right in that person's pocket, right? Yeah. Versus with a credit card, it's on credit. Yeah, it's like a virtual money, right? Exactly. So I don't use my debit very often. But 
even with a credit card, you can get it scanned. I had at the local gas station. I know it had to be at a gas station because the only time I use that card for any purchases is Amazon and gas. That's it. They, I, uh, because I they put a device in like some of the gas pumps. And, yeah, and that's all I'm thinking. And the thing is, is I had only gotten gas at one pump that month because I wasn't driving. I was on vacation. So, I could tell you exactly which gas station got scammed. Yeah. <laughs> because I was only at one gas station, all right? So, theoretically, you should be able to, you, you should check every card reader you do. And honestly, since I had that happen, I have started checking them to make sure they're legit. I mean, I noticed that um, you have a new wallet for your cards now. Oh, my Ridge wallet? Yeah. That for, it was a Christmas present, and it's convenient for cards. Now, you, but it also it also does another thing, which I think is really cool, which is uh, which is it stops RF RF like theft, where yep. they read your cards from your wallet. You can't do it anymore. I had that happen at uh, Kalahari. Yeah, you're saying I went to Kalahari once, and while I was there, I started getting I started getting purchases from people from that I wasn't making. And it turns out somebody had a like a one of those scanners. scanners yeah, and they can, especially the ones that you just tap to pay for something, they can easily get access to that. Like if you have a debit card where you just use the um the scan code, they can just take a scanner and get the you know debit card information that way. Well, I do I do want to address uh more of the security things. Like obviously, well, that you, is don't wanna, you don't want to you don't want to type all your information into a website if you don't have to. You don't want to like. You don't want to share your information. Do not share your information to a stranger online. That is something a lot of people. Give me an example. About an that example one. of this. Yeah. Example that I've heard from uh, from like a documentary thing I was listening to was that some woman like was being doxxed on the internet, and people were like, "You got to hack her." Some dude was like, "Okay." There are hackers coming after you. I'm going to help fix this problem. Give me this, this, and this information. She trusted him because he lied to her and said and, and made her believe that he was the good guy in the situation. He did it himself. Really? He was no better than anybody else, though. He just took advantage of her. Once he got the information he wanted, he then hacked into her Facebook, started chaos in, her, um, in and amongst her family or uh, fucking up her relationship. Sending photos. Oh, he went all out. Yeah, you know, with that woman. Yeah, he basically ruined her life, all because a couple of people on the internet wanted revenge for some relationship gone wrong. You think that was like a dark web thing too, like a hitman? That wasn't even dark web. That was poor chan. Oh, let me ask you this. You know how like sometimes you'll get like an email. You know, like it'll be like some fake person, right? Some girl, or whatever. Then there'll be a picture of the. Girl in like a bikini, right? And they you know are, it's a, it's a they hacker. Are, they are bots. And yeah. You think they, the are, they are trying to get your information because Facebook has made it so a lot of your information is hidden from people. Right. However, if you add them, they have information to all, or they have access to all of your information. Okay, so let me ask you this. Like the person on the actual picture itself, did that person get scammed? It's possible, but most likely it's just a bot account that's, that they posted a random photo of some woman that they found online. Like on Google Images or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it could be that they found somebody's Facebook account, stole their, inform stole their information, stole their images, and then used that image to uh, work it up in their Instagram account, whatever. But they stole their photos and then uploaded it to another to a Facebook account and then tried to get people to add them from there. That's fucking <laughs> these fucking people, man. See, that's that's another way that people will try to get your information. They try to gain your trust through various ways. Social engineering is a thing. Basically, being able to read people and get them to do what you want and get information out of them without them even realizing that you've done it. Like, there's bots everywhere. It could be Reddit. It could be you know. Well, it's not even just bots. In real life, people will do this. Yeah. If people will walk up to you and say, I'm so-and-so, I need access to this, or I need access to this, I'll listen to a guy whose job is literally to go into companies and see how secure they are, right? 
That is his job. Is basically, he walked up, said he was, say, said he was like an exterminator looking into a rat problem. Got into high security areas of a company, under the cover of being a rat, a rat exterminator. Yeah, it's like. Wait, so he, his job <laughs> is just to see how secure you know businesses are. Yeah, he was able to get into the company. Oh no! Shit. Into into private files. He's like, look, we got this information. Your your company failed at security. <laughs> he must be really good at like you know really impersonating well, like a. To be frankly honest, their upfront security stopped him from getting in. He then walked into the smokers' lounge. Then what? Hopped in an elevator. Then that, that that was it. <laughs> that easy. Yep. What the fuck? Because people will believe a story. The security guards were on were were on par, but random ass people aren't looking for random ass people aren't looking for people to lie to them constantly. Well, I mean, if you look casual, whatever. You yeah. Know, well, but if I walked up to you, say, "Hey, my name's Bob. Can you direct me to HR?" Would you blink twice? Right now, I'll be like, all right, HR's over there, you know. You know what I mean? And given that, do you think I could get information out of you personally if I just chatted you up a bit? If I could, could I get your information? I mean, you can't just walk up to someone like, hey, Definitely. my name's Bob. We're going to use Bob. So, yeah, cool hat. What's your social security num- number? Actually, you can. Really? <laughs> People fall for that? Especially, oh, where were you born especially at? that one's a lot easier because people aren't guarded as much about if you directly ask them what their social social security number is, it might be off putting. But if you ask them questions like if you if you ask them questions about like oh how's your family, who's your family, and stuff like that, and build rapport with them, you might be able to get every information out of them except for their social security number. Or if you go with the route of hey I saw a security issue well i need your social security number to solve that issue it's so like there's so much stuff that you put out there online that if anybody were to actually dig into that information they could know so much about you and big companies like google and facebook and and like just just the, the bigger companies amazon they all use that information to basically sell you shit you know you are their product for industry, consumerism, you know? So in the end, a lot of the information you put out there is being used to make you buy shit, you know? Let alone hackers. But I think we've covered uh, a lot about security. And a lot. I think my biggest advice on it is be careful what you put out there. Make sure your passwords are changing and don't use simple ass passwords and don't give random people your information. <laughs> yeah. You just got to secure yourself. You know, don't, I, you can be a nice person, but just don't, you know, give out too much information about yourself. Uh, thank you for watching the podcast. I've been C roller and I'm Willie. We'll see you in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed. Welcome to season two. Actually, it was very, um, very, very Pacific. Pacific? Yeah, with like Pacific? hacking. Pacific? Pacific. Not Atlantic? <laughs>